The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so we will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would, not, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And a happy Advent to everyone. I love these uh, seasons of the church year because it's an opportunity to begin again, which we need to have many opportunities to begin again. It's like the church says to us, the church gives us so many opportunities to start over. We have Advent, and then of course we have the new year in January, and then we have uh, the beginning of Lent, and we have the time of our own birthday, and all these moments of the church says, just begin again. Don't worry about the past. Start over, because God loves us and always wants us just to begin again joyfully to try and live better our Christian life. So here we have another opportunity, my brothers and sisters, to begin again, to try once more uh, to live the gospel that we re have received from Jesus Christ. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I was working with a group of sisters in Michigan. It's about an hour and 45 minutes drive back and forth. I was there for nine days with them, and... Uh, on my way home, I drove about 45 minutes and then my sister called. And so, of course, I pressed a little button on my phone. I was talking to my sister on the phone and we talked the entire rest of the way home for an hour on the phone. And it was only once I pulled into the garage that I said, I don't know how I got here. This is amazing. You know, I was so focused on the phone call that maybe some of you have done this. You sort of go into autopilot when you're driving. And, Realized that I don't know how fast I was going. I don't know what, how I turned where I was supposed to turn. I made it, but it was sort of like autopilot. I was awake. I was awake when I was driving, uh, but not as alert as I perhaps could have been. I mention that because today in the gospel, St. Paul says, stay awake. It is time to leave off the sleepiness and the darkness. Jesus himself says, stay awake, you do not know the day or the hour, but I want to emphasize the point that they're telling us to stay awake, but not just in the sense of not being asleep. What St. Paul and our Lord really want for us, of course, is that we are not just awake, but awake in the sense of alert and aware, that we are attentive to the Lord so that we can prepare our hearts for his coming. Today, the church invites us to awaken in our spiritual life, in the sense of being alert, aware, and attentive. Because it is in this way that we can become the people that God wants us to be. We can become the best version of ourselves. And so, how is it? Uh, where is the need for being alert? What I'd like to invite you to consider during this uh, first Sunday of Advent is to increase your level of awareness or being alert in three areas. 
being aware and alert in your relationship with God, in your relationship with one another, and in your relationship to yourself. And that if we would actually, during the season of Advent, if we would grow in a level of alertness in these three areas, we will have definitely increased our spiritual life by the time we arrive at the season of Christmas. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about what that means. And I'm going to focus mostly on the third one, how we have a better relationship with ourselves. So I'm going to hit very quickly the relationship with God and the relationship with one another because I think you already understand that for the most part. Okay, so we want to be alert and aware in our relationship with God. And that really means not doing anything more but changing our attitude. You see, because God is always with us. There is never a single moment when we are alone, but sometimes we say, oh, I feel very close to God, or I don't feel very close. Those sayings really do not express the truth, because it's not a matter of whether or not we feel close to God or feel not close to God. We are close to God, or better said, God is close to us. God is with us at every moment, and our Christian life is simply growing in this awareness that we live constantly in the presence of a loving God that he, was, he is there with us at every moment. He lives in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have been formed into the image of God, by the, the image of Jesus by the Holy Spirit, and our loving Father surrounds us constantly with his mercy. The season of Advent could be a way for us to awake, to become more alert and aware of the presence of God. I mean, how many times do we come to Mass, and at the end of Mass, they're like, I probably was awake for the Gloria, and maybe the closing announcements, and that was it, right? So let us be alert and aware of God's presence, not only here at Mass, but in every aspect of our lives. Next, to grow in our awareness, to be more awake to the presence of those around us. Every person is a sacred icon of the presence of Jesus in our life. Every person is a doorway through which we can love God. Because as we love the neighbor in front of us, we love God more perfectly. Wouldn't it be wonderful if this, in this season of Advent, we could grow in the awareness of the sacredness of each and every person in our life and see them as the image of Jesus. But very often we don't do that. We're so concerned with our own ideas and philosophies that we forget the sacred presence of people around us. Just think of this simple example. Imagine, uh, you know, someone's telling you a story and you're thinking to yourself, I can't wait till they're done talking because I have a better story that I want to share with them. And often our conversations are not about listening, but rather just talking to the other person. Or imagine a, a family, you know, this happens I think a lot in our society. Parents are hard at work, they come home from work and they turn on the TV. They even eat dinner sitting around the TV rather than around the table. They're awake, they're present in a sense, but they are not aware of the children's need for their attention, for their love, for their affection. Rather, their attention is focused on the TV or on a computer or on some other thing in the home, rather than playing with the children or talking with the children, engaging their children, in order that their children may experience love and affection, attention, the devotion that they deserve. And imagine if a family would do that for five years of simply sitting in front of the TV. Those children really will be raised in an environment in which they have not experienced the love that they deserve, the attention, the affection that they deserve from their parents. And I think that happens because we fail to recognize the sacred presence of the people around us. So during this season of Advent, we can work to grow in our awareness to be awake and alert of the sacred presence of God and the sacred presence of people around us. We are also called to be aware of our own sacred presence, to be aware of ourselves, what is happening in our own hearts and in our own spirit. And I'd like to talk about this in terms of uh, resisting temptation. If you can be alert awake and aware of your own inner dimension, what's happening inside you, 
It is easy for, easy for us to acquire virtue, to grow in holiness. Now, I'm going to talk this morning about temptation, and I'm going to use a specific example, but this could be applied to any temptation or addictive behavior that you might have in your life, because we all have our pet sins, and we have many addictions, addictions to uh, shopping, addictions to gossip, addiction, addiction to anger. We have many addictions that we carry around within us. We should be aware of those addictions so that we can overcome them. Today I'd like to talk about an addiction that is very prominent and growing in our country, and that is the addiction to internet use, right? Especially uh, illicit images that people are looking at on the internet. If you look at the statistics, it is staggering how many people are regularly looking at inappropriate material on the internet, the increase in women who are engaging in this behavior, and the early age at which children are exposed to these kinds of images. In order to combat that ourselves or any other addictive behavior that you might have, maybe you have the addiction of looking at Facebook two or three hours every night on the computer or something like that. Many people have these sort of addictions. We can overcome this or begin to win this battle by looking at our own inner self. And here's what happens. Imagine your own particular struggle. In the evening, you have a temptation. I want to go turn on the computer and look at Facebook. And you know well that if you do that, you're going to look at Facebook for the next two hours and waste a good portion of your evening. So at that moment, you have two options, right? You can either go and turn on the computer, or you can not turn on the computer. You can resist the temptation. I think that if a person just simply goes to the computer and turns it on, they're sort of living a mindless life. They're not attentive to their se themselves and their needs. On the other hand, you can respond in this way. When you are tempted, if you are present to yourself, if you are aware of yourself, awake to yourself, you can ask this simple question. What am I feeling in this moment? Why do I feel drawn to this addictive behavior? What's happening within you? And if you can name the emotion that is present there, for example, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, I'm lonely, I'm afraid. If you can name the emotion that's happening within you, you are more aware of the inner dimension of yourself. You are present to yourself. And that question is extraordinarily imp important. What am I feeling? Because once you recognize the feeling that, you're, that you have, that you want to probably suppress or get away with or remove because the feeling itself is uncomfortable, once you can recognize that feeling within you, you can ask, what is the trigger that caused me to feel this? And often you will find that something happened to you during the day that caused you to feel frustrated or angry or unloved. Maybe you had a, 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 an argument or a disagreement with your spouse that morning and you still feel bad about it and you're carrying it within your heart. Or maybe at work your boss said, you know, you, know, you never do these things right and we feel un undervalued or unimportant. Once you can acknowledge the trigger that has caused the emotion, it is possible then to dismiss the trigger. First of all, you say, well, that's not true. I know my wife loves me, right? I'm not going to let this really affect my behavior right now. Now, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes the trigger is real and it stays with you. And if that happens, you simply have to then examine the emotion. I feel frustrated. I feel angry. And the important thing at this moment is for us to say, our emotions are good. Our emotions are a blessing from God. It's okay if you feel anger. It's okay if you carry within you an emotion that is uncomfortable and that makes you suffer a little bit internally. Because the truth is, that emotion will not hurt you. It may be uncomfortable, but it will not hurt you. And if you can arrive at the point where you say, I know my emotions are good, and I will simply live in this emotion without trying to get rid of it by entering into some addictive behavior, then little by little we can learn to live with our emotions, to treasure our emotions, and overcome our behavior. All of this is the process of mindfulness. 
It is reframing who, how we think about the world and being attentive to ourselves, being aware of who we are and the reality of our emotions. I think there's also one thing that's very important in this conversation of being aware and present to ourselves, of being alert to what's happening in our inner selves in order to grow in virtue. When you are tempted, remember, behind the temptation is something good and something beautiful. For example, even the person who may want to look at illicit things on the internet, what is behind that temptation is good. It is a desire for unity. It is a desire to be loved. It is a desire for affection. It is a desire for communion with another person. What lies behind the temptation comes from the goodness of who we are as people. It is simply necessary for us to recognize that we cannot always give ourselves every good thing in every moment. And we cannot try to attain those good th things through illicit ways. In this way, my brothers and sisters, we are present to ourselves. We are awake and alert to our inner needs and desires, to our triggers and our emotions, and we can live with them by the grace of God. During this season of Advent, I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to be more attentive, to be more aware to the presence of God, to the sacredness of your brothers and sisters, and to the reality of your own inner dimension and struggle for the virtues that are necessary for our Christian life. If I were to sort of sum up everything that I've said this morning, I would say this. I invite you during this season of Advent to be awake and aware by one, living in the present, and two, living in the presence. I invite you to live in the present by letting go of the past that's gone and done with, by not worrying about the future, simply living in this moment, because it is this moment and this moment only in the present that we can find, know, and love God and one another. I would also say we must live in the presence that is, in the presence of God, in the sacred presence of one another, and in the sacred presence of ourselves, so that we can learn virtue and prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ Jesus, our Savior and the light of the world.